Uh, thank you, Dr. Putango. And uh, yes, uh, I was just realized yesterday, I, it seems uh, like I'm the only student speaker at this workshop. So I'm very grateful. Thanks for the uh, invitation. Uh, again, my name is Chen Chen. I go by Leo. I'm a PhD candidate at University of Central Florida. I'm here to talk about a mixed integer uh, programming, mixed integer optimization model for a failure mitigation and restoration in interdependent networks. Uh, this is a joint work with my advisor, Dr. Vladimir Boginski and our other colleagues from UCF and Air Force Research. So following by a uh, previous keynote speaker, uh, Dr. Nagurni's uh, uh, content, uh, there are uh, complex network systems there uh, everywhere in uh, modern world as uh, they arise as many aspects of human activities and uh, natural systems. So some of these uh, infrastructure systems, they provide physical uh, commodities to us. For example, electrical power grid, water and gas distribution networks. And some of other infrastructure systems, they don't, uh, they don't provide uh, physical products, but we use them every day uh, in human activities, such as transportations and communication networks. And these uh, infrastructure systems, their operations, uh, very often they are not alone. They are not independent, but uh, interdependent uh, on each other. So that uh, creates these multi-layered uh, network systems. So for example, uh, in this picture, you can see a two-layer interdependent, uh, interdependent power grid network and a SCADA network based on IEEE uh, 118 boost data. So the power grid, they will send, uh, provide electricity for communication networks and while the communication network, they will send signal back and forth to control the power grid. So the challenge of analyzing these larger scale uh, inter uh, network systems, uh, basically uh, uh, they can be cate categorized in two uh, subjects. The first one is the interdependence. So these networks, they engage in complex interactions and information exchange uh, via a communication infrastructure. And also their node in one network requires support from nodes in another network. So this is what we call the interdependence. And another thing for these interdependent networks is the cascading processes. So these uh, processes, they're very crucial to the dynamics of system re uh, resilience and vulnerability. And also interdependent networks, they are uh, susceptible to cascading failures, uh, where a failure in one network may cause failures in, in another na networks. So they, they create a challenge uh, no matter to analyzing the uh, robustness, complexity, or uh, work, uh, or optimization problem. So in this uh, uh, work, we present a two-layer interdependent network mitigation and a restoration uh, model. So the goal is we want, we want to develop a optimization model that takes into account for node failures and also capture the dynamics of failure propagation and simultaneously consider the mitigation and the restoration. So the objective is uh, to minimize uh, the total fortifications, uh, baked up fixed charge and the restoration costs, which I will uh, explain the detail later. And the decision to, uh, to be made in this model is uh, you can, the decision maker, they can choose which node in the networks to fortify. So they are immune to uh, the failure. And also, um, <clears throat> Because we assume uh, the uh, the capacity of arcs, uh, uh, it's capacitating arcs in the network. So we assume there uh, exists a big uh, uh, capacity to mitigate the failure. And then another important decision to make is when the failure is propagating and your restoration budget is limits. Uh, what is the sequence of uh, recover the nodes in order to uh, bring bring back naval operations and also to, uh, to, uh, to uh, mitigate the failure propagation. So constraints in our models include the naval operations and also the dynamic failure propagations. And also there are interactions between failure propagation and the networks. For interactions, I mean, how will these uh, failure propagations affect your network performance? That's what we mean by interaction here. So we made several assumptions here. The first one is the failure happened uh, only on nodes. 
and the nodes belongs to different layers has this so-called one-to-many interdependence relationship. That is uh, for any node in one layer, if it fails, then all of its dependent node in it, other uh, layers were failed at the time t plus one. So the second assumption is uh, when node i fails, uh, the capacity associated with the arc, uh, uh, with, associated with the outgoing arc of this node, they are reduced to zero. So this assumption says the destruction of nodes solely is sufficient to lower the network performance. And uh, we use maximum flow to uh, represent the original network performance. And this assumption is without loss of generality because um, for uh, water power grid or gas distribution network, we can see them as a network with flow moving from uh, the source node to the demand node or the sink node. And we assume the performance are known to the decision maker and we use them as the restoration threshold uh, when failure happens. And the last assumption is uh, we, uh, we assume that the restoration on nodes requires one time period. So the node will be functional uh, and, and can, be, can be brought back at a time uh, period T plus one if restoration is met at a time T. So this is the pictures that describe the decision dynamics. So originally, uh, if nothing happens, uh, this networks function normally and we have the original network flow here. But once uh, there are a failure uh, uh, initiated, the seed node uh, activation here, we mean uh, once the failure happens here and then uh, your network flow will drop to a certain level depends on the, uh, the failure, the number of failure node. And before before this uh, before this failure happens, there are mitigations uh, we can make where, uh, which is uh, which node to not, uh, fortify and which uh, arc capacity we want to uh, use installed. And then when the uh, when the failure happens, your uh, network flows performance uh, is damaged. And then it starts to the recovery uh, periods. Uh, where uh, you can make a restoration decisions and then to bring back uh, the network performance. However, during this uh, recovery periods, the network, the network of failure is still uh, propagating. So it is very important to decide the sequence of which node to recover uh, in order to minimize the effects from failure propagation. Um, so uh, uh, this is the, the whole mixed integer program formulation we have. Uh, the objective function is to minimize the fortification cost, uh, restoration cost, as well as the fixed charge for using the backup capacity. And then the first set of constraints is the uh, maximum flow constraints. Uh, excuse me. So we have the network flow uh, balance constraints, and then we have the uh, restoration threshold constraints. And then the constraint four is the uh, capacity constraints where it's subject uh, to uh, failure and the restoration. So if the node is failed, then this capacity will reduce to zero. But if it's restored, then we can use the normal capacity. And there exists a, a backup capacity here uh, where we can uh, decide uh, uh, where to invest, uh, where, uh, whether to make such investments before the failure uh, uh, begins. And then this is a nonlinear constraint. And then another set of constraints is the constraints that describe the failure propagation dynamically here. And then uh, I will get into detail about this set constraint later. And then the last part is the budget constraints. So we have the fortification budget, we have the restoration budget, and there are some other logical constraints as well. For example, a node can be restored if and only if it is failed. And then, uh, and we also force the origin, uh, origin at, at the source and the single node that they have absolute priority to be repaired in order uh, if they are failed in order to uh, make sure the network performance is, is, is bring back. And here I wanna uh, make, uh, emphasize that uh, this is a deterministic model. So we assume that uh, the failure node uh, is known at the beginning. Uh, we know which node they are, uh, uh, they will fail. But what we don't know is how this failure will propagate through the uh, 
uh, the interdependent links and how should we optimize, uh, how should we uh, decide which node to be uh, repaired uh, the sequence. This is something what we don't know. So therefore there's an optimization model here. So uh, like I said, the dynamic failure propagation, this set of constraints, uh, we built our model based on uh, Veramif's work. So in their, in their papers, uh, they give a binary uh, integer program model uh, these y variable are, uh, are binaries. So they, they give a binary integer program models to describe the failure propagation only. So from these pictures, you can see uh, these two stripe nodes, they are failed. And then the, link, the blue links are the interdependent links between two different networks. So this failure level propagates uh, at the next stage and then all the way to the last stage until some of the nodes are uh, disconnecting the, their original uh, network. So based on these constraints, we introduce uh, recovery variables to uh, mitigate the failure variables. Then we also introduce a uh, fortification variables. So once fortification is made, then this node cannot be failed. So, and it's not necessary to consider the restoration recovery uh, either. And then uh, another part is the not capacity constraints, which is uh, nonlinear, but we can linearize them using the standard mechanic linearization with an additional variable. So this is uh, how we uh, linearize that nonlinear capacity constraints. So uh, the next I'm going to talk about the possible extensions of our model. Uh, These questions was asked by our reviewers and it was a fantastic uh, questions. So it turns out uh, our model can be uh, extended into different settings with only moderate efforts. The first one is uh, <clears throat> since we propose a two layer interdependent networks and then actually our model can be extended to multi-layer interdependent networks. So say we have a uh, M directed graphs, so M layers of networks. And for the propagation, the cascading constraints, uh, we, can only, uh, we only need to uh, just uh, replace uh, uh, the number of layer one to two to P and Q. Say we have P uh, layers on one side and a Q layer on the other side. So uh, we can extend our constraints, the propagation constraints in, from two layers into multi-layer networks. And another extension is, can we consider uh, other types of network operations, not just using mix mount flow? So yes, we can replace uh, the mix mount, the constraints that describe the, uh, the mix mount flows uh, to, for example, we can consider a multi-commodity flow, which is uh, very common in an interdependent network literature as well. Some, uh, some of the research, they also consider uh, the multi-commodity flow as a network operations in their interdependent networks. So we only need to replace uh, the, the black flow balance constraints uh, to this multi-commodity flow uh, constraints. But here, uh, I want to point out that the capacity level are still subject to node failures. So uh, there's no need to change the capacity uh, constraints. N and then the evaluation of the network performance should be changed too if you change your if you change your network operation constraints. For example, right now, if I change the uh, maximum flow constraints into multi commodity flow, then the network performance, how should I measure? It becomes uh, how much cost is required to allocate um, fortification, backup capacity, and restoration in order to satisfy the demand for each commodity. Uh, when a failure happens. And the third extension is the capacity degradation. So in our, in our uh, work, we assume the capacity is uh, reduced to zero if a node is failed. The outgoing arc of that node is, uh, uh, the capacity is reduced to zero. But um, by introducing an uh, additional parameter, uh, this uh, gamma, uh, we can actually adjust the capacity uh, level uh, degradation level. And still, this is a linear, uh, nonlinear constraints and it requires two proper linearizations. And also, um, you don't have to have a uniform uh, loss rates parameters for every arc. You can introduce an index uh, related to the arc and then you can have tailored, customized uh, uh, loss rates to different arcs of your network. Yeah, depending on uh, 
depending on how critical they are, this you can uh, assume a higher uh, rate for for the loss rate parameters of the arts. So our solution uh, methodologies, uh, we use commercial optimization solver, and we also uh, try to derive value inequalities and the strengths and partial formulation, uh, the substructures of uh, the province. So the first one is the uh, strengths and cascading inequalities. So for the sets uh, that describes the failure propagations, uh, we there exists a big M like constants uh, because this is from Baromir's work. And then we try to get rid of these big M constants by disaggregation and in order to tighten the formulations. So we have this proposition saying that inequality 25 is valid to the substructure, hence to the whole problem. And then the proof is very, uh, uh, the proof is, uh, the sketch is, we show that this value inequality is actually a disaggregated version of the original uh, uh, failure propagation constraint. Hence, it is, uh, it is valid and it also dominates the original uh, failure propagation constraint. Another uh, uh, substructure we consider is the linearized uh, capacity uh, constraints. So, in fact, these uh, these uh, set of uh, substructures, their extreme points are very are easy to identify. So we have this uh, proposition here saying the feasible solutions defined by uh, this uh, uh, this uh, formulation here uh, is a is also stronger than the original linearized uh, capacity constraints. And then the proof, we just characterize all the extreme points and they show uh, the fractional points, they are cut off by these strengths and the formulations, but they, they satisfy the original linearized constraints. So then uh, the computations. So the computations, we uh, use uh, networks uh, X package and then, uh, the setup is we consider the number of nodes 10 all the way to 50 on each side of a network. So it's 10, 10, 20, 20, and all the way to 50, 50. And, and the interdependent uh, links, uh, this is uh, capital E, this is set. Uh, one, two means the interdependent links from layer one to layer two. Uh, so it's this, uh, 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 this interdependent uh, 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 links from layer two to layer one. They are randomly generated and the density uh, are ranging from 10% all, all the way to the 40%. And we use Python 2.7 and Groby and we set an hour for the computation. So the first uh, uh, computation is we try to show by using uh, our restorations plus backup plus fortifications, uh, we can uh, demonstrate it is beneficial to consider all these uh, actions together uh, when consider uh, uh, other combinations uh, for the scenario. And then we show, um, it seems like uh, when the network size is growing, the, sa uh, the savings is, is proportional to this uh, network size as well. So that's the first uh, computation we show is the cost comparisons for uh, the scenarios we proposed to mitigate uh, the, the, the failure of propagation. And the second uh, computation is we try to show um, how much improvement uh, the, the gap uh, we can do when using uh, the value inequalities and the stringent formulation. Oh, by the way, uh, the value inequalities, uh, we propose they are polynomial to the, uh, to the uh, network size. So we add them, uh, at the beginning of the formulation. And then we also substitute the, the strengths and capacity constraints uh, with the original constraints. And then for this computation, we do not limit the time because we wanna uh, see how much improvements we can get in the root, root node. Okay. So it turns out for all the instance we generated, uh, the improvements are all above 54%, so above half. And also there's maximum gap improvements, uh, which is close to 86%. And then the next is uh, we, we let Groby to start to solve the problem. And we compare then uh, in terms of the branch and bound nodes, uh, the number of branch and bound nodes and uh, the structure mixed integer programming cuts generated by Groby automatically and their computational uh, time. 
Uh, if if the instance hit uh, an hour and it's not soft, we report the ending gap. So the first three category, uh, Groby can solve the strength and formulations uh, less than 161 seconds. But uh, you can see uh, for the original formulations, Groby start to uh, unable to solve the problem and then leave the gap. And this is the first three category. And if the last two category, which we consider a large in, in network instance, um, uh, uh, the, uh, for the strength and formulations, uh, the, the average gap is less than 6%, while some of the uh, instance uh, Groby cannot even find a feasible solution. Yeah, so the dash here means the feasible, uh, the Groby cannot fis uh, find a feasible solution after an hour. And the only exception is the, uh, this is uh, the star sign here. So this means uh, for this instance, uh, Groby uh, cannot find uh, feasible, so initial feasible solutions after an hour. So it turns out it took a Groby uh, like a four, 4,100 seconds to find, to solve a rules of relaxation. But if you look at the previous table, you can see once Groby find the rules of relaxation, the gap improvement is still higher than the uh, for the strength and formulation is still higher than the nature of, uh, the original formulation. The improvement is, a bra, uh, is about 62%. So in conclusions, uh, what we have done, uh, we, demo uh, we demonstrate a cost saving can be achieved by considering mitigation and restoration simultaneously to interdict the cascading failure and to restore network performance in a designated time horizon. And also uh, in the presence of dynamic cascading failures, our model is able to prioritize the recovery. Uh, our model is able to decide the optimal sequence to repair the damaged components in order to avert the first failure cascade. And then our computation shows uh, uh, these strengths and formulations, they're very effective to solve instance, instance from small to medium size. And then uh, with interdependency uh, density ranging from 10% to 40% with a sh very short amount of time. And our future work, uh, there are two possible directions. The first one is consider uh, link failure because in this research, we focus on the node failure only. And we can consider the link failure and to see if it is uh, beneficial to harden in the interdependent links in order to avert failure cascading. Another uh, possible direction is the development of effective decom decomposition method to solve these this types of problems. So uh, that's my presentation. Thank you for your attention. And uh, if there's any questions, I'm here uh, ready to answer them.